Trubisky, he's still, I think, not as good in the pocket as Kenny Pickett. And we're going to run the clips here in a second. I thought Kenny Pickett had basically a perfect uh, week two performance. And it's a lot of things that we were hitting on with the pre, pre-draft profile. It's r- throwing on the mu- run. That's an accurate pass right there, right off the gate. That's not a normal drop back. This is the third and nine. This is the most important thing. Cover two look, goes into cover three, hits the person on target. And then you see the second angle. It's the in-pocket movement from Kenny Pickett. Now he doesn't have the most electric arm and stuff, but to me, it's just very like very headsy movement here knows where to go to the ball. But to, to me, the most underrated part about Kenny Pickett is the ability to move around a little bit. I think that Kenny Pickett looks prepared for, to be the starter right away. I think that you have to go with the, the first round draft pick. I'm not sure if Tomlin will actually do this, but I think that Mitch Trubisky's leech is very short. Uh, that's another throw getting hit against the blitz, leading him with touch. He was just, he was just dominating uh, out there, taking every single throw. We just need to see the one last thing that people are going to freak out over is how far downfield he's throwing the ball to. Yep. But to me, he's making every single read. You can't tell me which which pass he, uh, of these he should have threw it down the down the field more. Like that's man coverage, got in motion, hit Benny Snell with the linebacker uh, behind him having to go through coverage. Like that is perfect ball placement again. So I'm I'm all in on Kenny Pickett. I don't think that he's like going to be some superstar, but I think that he's ready to go. Th- this play really stood out to me. The one where he faced immediate interior disruption, which a lot of these rookie quarterbacks are not doing. And look, he's letting this go at the exact same time as tied in and Pat Fryermuth, he's playing with the starters here, is in line with the safety or the linebacker, whichever one it is. And he's throwing it to a spot. And what, this is second down and 10, second and long. And he hits it, puts it in a perfect placement. That's all timing. That That's all rhythm. That That's all, you know, anticipation. Um, to your point, it's funny. We talked about last year with, Ben Roethlisberger and how quickly he got rid of the football. I believe here in week two of the preseason, Kenny Pickett's time to throw was less than two seconds. Yet all of these throws were on the money and and good decisions. Also to your point, 13 of 25 passes this past weekend were three yards or less and only one pass that traveled more than 20 yards. Uh, So I agree with your sentiment that we need to see some vertical passing because if you look at, I don't know, Trevor Lawrence's arm, Malik Willis's arm, maybe even Desmond Ritter's arm, ones that we've seen over the last couple of years, Kenny Pickett might be last in that list in terms of arms. I'm just saying arm strength as a whole, but in terms of the movement that we saw from Mitch that we know from a Matt Canada system along with motion and maybe too much motion at times, um, it's going to be a factor here because his athleticism was, was the biggest part of that. And I'm not, I'm not one that says like arm strength, has to happen in order for him to be a downfield passer because the most important thing to him be more aggressive moving forward, even if it is week one, is the offensive line has to stay up. Yes. And the penetration and the disruption that the offensive line allowed forced shorter passes than probably what he wanted to happen. Yeah, and he, I would say both of the preseason games, he was doing the two-minute drill, and there's a lot of just check-down opportunities in those as well. So, yeah, I, I think it's it's a criticism of his game. It's kind of how he played at Pitt as well, but he can throw on the move, and sometimes when you're throwing on the move, those are downfield shots. So, ultimately, I think for Best Ball Mania 3, he was not getting drafted a lot. I think that we should be comfortable stacking him, especially with George Pickens, uh, maybe with Deontay Johnson. We'll get to those guys in a second. But to me, I'm I see a baseline of NFL production from the Steelers offense based off of what I've seen from Kenny Pickett. And I do think we're going to see Kenny Pickett early in the season. I just don't think Trubisky is consistent enough to be uh, what Tomlin's looking for with this good of a defense. It's already been a whirlwind of an off season for Pickett. Cause we got those off season reports that he was by far and away third on the depth chart. The whole offense was not performing well. Mason Rudolph was mentioned as a possible starter as well. Uh, now, I think it's pretty clear that if Mitch does not play better, Kenny Pickett is the one who's going to be playing early on. And is this a, a little leverage siren here, Hayden, for of people course. who best ball mania three have been drafting all season long? We're going to have some more smaller tournaments coming out here. Hint, hint, wink, wink in the next few weeks as well. Kenny Pickett's ADP is undrafted. He's free mm-hmm. in every single one. The time is now. And uh, we always talk about the rushing quarterbacks and the rookie quarterbacks. And we're like, oh, all the rookies get priced up. Uh, here's one right here. You know, he's going to be out there for a lot of it. So uh, maybe our maybe the consensus um, thoughts on Kenny Pickett were just wrong. And maybe he's a little bit better than that. Okay, let's talk about the wide receivers, too, because we highlighted George Pickens. There's a clip on the channel on him. If you all want to check it out in his week one performance, uh, Deontay Johnson didn't play in that game. And I don't think Chase Claypool uh, play very much in that game, if at all. So now we know with all three of their starting wide receivers out there that Chase Claypool is locked in to the slot. But that begs the question, 
what and who is going to be out there in two wide receiver sets. So in 21 of 25 snaps, all three of these wide receivers played. So it was 11 personnel. And in those four other snaps where it was two wide receiver sets, Deontay Johnson was out there for all of them. Chase Claypool got two. George Pickens got two. Yeah, George Pickens got the first two, but it came after a nice uh, contested catch from, from Chase Claypool way down the field. So I think this is a little bit up for grabs. I will say that Gunnar Orlovsky was playing in the slot, and I think that George, uh, Chase Claypool... Oshevsky. I mean, you just butchered that. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> who cares? Uh, Chase Claypool being in the slot, I think, is good for his real-life value, but I do think it's actually going to be a negative for his fantasy value. When the Steelers want to go to that more like traditional slot receiver snaps, I'm not sure if Chase Claypool is going to be that guy. Like He's like big slot, but he's not like M Mr. Option route underneath, and that's exactly what happened here. Uh, with the first-team offense, Chase Claypool ran a route on 10 of 18 dropbacks. George picked in 17 of 18 so to me i think i'm drafting chase claypool after george pickens chase claypool is actually going to be one of the people i'm fading because if there is a fourth receiver and it is like a classic little slot receiver i think that's going to come at the expense of chase claypool so i think the steelers are smart by putting chase claypool into the slot and running their three best wide receivers out there but there are some situations some personnel sets where i think chase claypool is going to come off the field and i think george pickens just straight up better than chase claypool so uh, i think chase claypool's uh stocks down george pickens stocks slightly up Thought Deontay moved really well. Chase Claypool and George Pickens now an underdog going back to back. Wide receiver 50, wide receiver 51. And you mentioned Gunnar Olszewski. Uh, also, they drafted Calvin Austin, who had some moments during training camp too.